Us humans, we belong to a group of organisms called animals. Nothing new there. But did we all evolve from this? Let's find out more. I make a new video each week exploring this strange and wonderful universe that we live in. If you enjoy these videos then please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Let's have a quick recap of the history of our homeworld. The Earth was formed about 4.6 billion years ago. Some stuff happened, and here we are 4.6 billion years later. I want to go back and look at one of these points when stuff was happening and see if we can determine where we came from. And by this I mean all animals. In order to more fully understand this, we need to know a little bit about how different species are related to each other. A species consists of just one type of organism, and here we can see my cat. This belongs to the species Felis catus. Actually, the catus is the species bit. It also belongs to the genus Felis. This genus contains the domestic cat and also the wild cat. These are two very closely related species. They shared a common ancestor very recently in evolutionary history. The next level is family. This group contains a larger number of species, but they are all less closely related. As we move down the tree of life, each subsequent grouping still contains the species we started with, but it also contains a greater number of species. These species, however, are more and more distantly related. In other words, they shared a common ancestor further back in evolutionary history. When we get down to the class Mammalia, this still contains my cat, but it also contains all mammals. It contains dogs and wolves and horses and sheep and me and you. Down towards the bottom branches of the tree of classification, we find the grouping of kingdom. There are a limited number of kingdoms and so there are a lot of quite different organisms within that level of classification. For instance, the kingdom Animalia contains all animals. That's all the insects, mollusks, fish, birds, even you and me. We are all animals. When Carl Linnaeus was devising his system of classification, he only recognised two kingdoms, animals and plants, or vegetabilia as he called them. Over time, we have modified and expanded these groupings as we have learned about and discovered more and more organisms. Modern classification systems largely use genetic similarities to classify organisms. So where does our kingdom, the animals, come from? From which other group did we develop? It's thought that we developed from the protozoa. These are the animal-like members of the kingdom Protista, but were in the protozoa. This group contains a wide variety of different organisms. It is most likely that the group that is our nearest relative and that our ancestors diverged from their ancestors millions of years ago, are a group called the Coanoflagellates. Say hello to your ancestors. Well, not really. Many people get quite confused when it comes to evolution. What I initially said is true. We share a common ancestor with the Coanoflagellates. These organisms are single-celled and found in aquatic environments, from the sea to lakes and rivers. They're also found throughout these watery environments, from the upper layers to the lake, river and ocean beds. Each organism is a single cell, with a whip-like tail called a flagellum. Surrounding the flagellum is what looks like a collar, or funnel. Upon closer inspection of the collar, we find that it's made from projections of the cell called microvilli, tightly packed together. The coanoflagellates feed by beating their flagellum which draws water between the microvilli. They then trap bacteria a bit like a sieve would do. These bacteria are then absorbed into the cell as food. So how do we know this is the case that we evolved from this group of organisms? As long ago as the 19th century, scientists thought that we evolved from these organisms because sponges, which are animals, have cells that closely resemble the cells of coanoflagellates. Resembling something isn't really proof that they share a common ancestor though. It all really comes down to genetics. All animals are multicellular, and so the cells in our bodies need to be able to communicate with each other. 
One way in which this happens is through a type of protein called a receptor tyrosine kinase. These proteins are found embedded in cell membranes and allow cells to communicate and by doing that control the activities of individual cells. All animals have these proteins and these proteins are coded for by a specific set of genes. So all animals have these genes. No other organisms have these genes. Plants don't have them, fungi don't have them, and neither do most protozoa. Coanoflagellates, on the other hand, do have these genes. This provides excellent evidence that animals, all animals, evolved from the coanoflagellates, whose direct descendants we see today. Particular work was done on one species of coanoflagellates, called Monosega brevicolis, it was this species that in 2001 gave us our first hint about their evolutionary relationships. So why should a unicellular organism need genes that allow the cells to communicate with each other? Well firstly, coanoflagellates may use these proteins to help them to find out about their external environment. In addition, these single-celled organisms can actually form colonies of many cells. These aren't formed from separate cells coming together, but by one cell multiplying and those cells joining together. They also join in the same way with their flagella pointing outwards. These genes and proteins then allow these cells to communicate. They also have an additional function, which is that they help the cells stick together to form these colonies. Well, that's all for our little trip into evolutionary history, but until next time, Thank you for watching.